here at St. James, we are in the process of getting back to normal. We are having in-person worship here at the church every Sunday morning at 1030, and you are welcome to attend. In late summer, we begin to see the fruit of our labors in fields and gardens, the produce of God's good creation. This year, we also recognize many fields and gardens are under great stress. So we bring what we have to share, praying that God's generosity will multiply the fruit we have gathered to support those whose summer has been much less productive. Please leave your offerings in the mailbox at the manse or mail it to us. Our call to worship. God hears our cries for help and rescues us from all our troubles. God draws near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. God redeems the life of all people. None who take refuge in God will be condemned. So let us worship the one who lifts us and praise God's holy name. to rejoice in you always. Make us gentle to everyone. Keep us from being anxious about anything. Help us to ask you for what we need with thanksgiving. And let your peace guard our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. God of mystery and power, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below, keeping covenant and steadfast love with all who walk before you with pure and upright hearts. Fill our lives with your glory as you filled the temple with cloud when Solomon first brought the ark into your holy dwelling place. Give us the strength and the power to withstand the forces of evil at work in our lives and in our world. Amen. We begin today in scripture reading from uh, Paul's letter to the community at Philippi in Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 9 Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again rejoice Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do Remember the Lord is coming soon Don't worry about anything instead pray about everything Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you have learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. And Paul writes these instructions in very much the same vein to the community at Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 6, we read, a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, 
against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, and on every occasion, stay alert <clears throat> and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm number 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies! With my whole being, body, and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young at a place near your altar, O Lord of Heaven's armies, my King and my God. What joy for those who can live in your house, always singing your praises. What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have set their minds on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. When, when they, they walk, walk through the valley of weeping, it, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. They will continue to grow stronger, and each of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. O Lord God of heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. O God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one you have anointed. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the health house of my God than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. O Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. So today we are coming to the end of the chapter of Romans 12. We've come to the, the very final bit, which says, Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. I love that last sentence. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. To me, this sums up so much of what I believe. It tells the benefit of putting our faith into practice. If we behave as Christ has commanded us to, if we do good as defined by Christ and not by the world, 
then we will defeat evil. But if we spend our energy bearing grudges and seeking revenge, then we will become the evil that we fight. Sometimes it feels like there's a lot of evil in the world, doesn't it? And so little good. It, it doesn't seem possible that, that the good will defeat the evil. I feel like this week as we watch those pictures from Afghanistan coming over the television, it seemed an awful lot like evil was winning. Because evil is real. But you know, evil isn't only in unwelcome, unjust military action. Evil isn't only in politics and politicians. Evil isn't about ethnicity or geography. It is about the way we live our lives, about us acting like the people of God. Not just the people who run the countries, but us too. We ordinary people can be just as evil as our leaders. And the way that we beat evil is by learning to overcome evil with good. Overcoming evil with good isn't as easy as it sounds. Well wishes and good intentions will not be enough. The best way, in fact probably the only way, to truly defeat evil is through our actions. By becoming better people, we live our lives in a way that, you know, is raising that middle finger to evil, and in the process, it changes the whole world. Our world runs right now on self-interest. From economic systems to our daily routines, we are conditioned to put ourselves and our own interests above everything else. Violent extremism is just an extension of the self-interest theme. When it's my way or the highway, the end justifies the means and the lives of hundreds or even thousands of innocents just become collateral damage. To overcome evil with good, we have to become more intentional about helping people who can't offer us anything in return. Offering an encouraging word, lending a hand, giving to, to contact house, being kind. There are dozens of ways to drive a stake through evil's heart by laying down your self-interest on a daily basis. Last week we talked about loving our neighbors about how to put other people ahead of ourselves. That's part two of Jesus' great commandment, love God and love each other. But evil treats its neighbors as objects, not as other people, not as equals. It strips the humanity out of life and turns the children of God into nameless faces who should be feared rather than treated with respect or love. We are just beginning to understand that our neighbors are not just the people who live next door to us. They're the people we meet every single day, at work, at the grocery store, out on the street. When it comes to identifying your neighbors, there are no litmus tests and there are no limits. Jesus was really clear that whether you like it or not, everyone out there is your neighbor. You don't have to agree with your neighbors, but you do have to love them. And that means treating them with the same respect and decency that you want others to give to you. There are no guarantees in this world, are there? If, there, if I've learned anything in the last few years, it's that life is really short and it could change in a heartbeat. We can't afford to use words like tomorrow or someday, I'll get around to it. Because life is lived in the present, in this moment, right here, right now. Evil wants to force your presence into a box filled with fear and anger and bitterness. It wants to steal away the simple joys of life and rob you of the experience that cultivates your relationship with God and with other people. So it's time for you to step out of your box and enjoy your life. Overcome evil with good by savoring every single moment that you get, by experiencing new things 
and having the courage to welcome new people into your life. What this passage is saying very loudly and very clearly is that evil only wins if we let it. Evil only wins when we return other people evil for evil. If someone insults you and snarls at you, you are not overcome. You are overcome if you snarl right back at them. And then the unpleasant person has become your role model. You are copying evil and evil is overcoming you. If someone hates you and you hate him right back, then evil's getting the victory, isn't it? If someone strikes you and you strike back, then you have become the evil one. The Apostle Paul says, don't overcome by being evil. Don't overcome evil with evil. Overcome evil with good. If someone reviles you, you are supposed to smile at them and say, God bless you. That person won't know how to react to that, and you have overcome him. You have won. That person has not changed you, and you have gone on the offensive with the most powerful weapon in the world, the love of God. If someone strikes you on the cheek, Jesus says, turn the other cheek, and that will leave your adversary totally confused. And then on top of that, you should say, I love you. If you have suffered a great evil, you know how easy it is for that evil to overcome you, for you to be defined by it, for the evil that was done to you to dominate your life. But scripture tells us that, the, the, that there is good news. The evil you have suffered does not need to be the thing that defines you. God says you are in Jesus Christ. Don't let that happen to you. Do not be overcome by the evil that surrounds you or by the evil that has been done to you. Something better is out there for you. Something better is possible for you. You can overcome evil with your goodness. The problem for us here in this place today is where do we begin if we want to overcome evil with good? So here is what I suggest. Let's begin with prayer. We need to pray. We need to raise godly children and teach our children the difference between right and wrong. We need to get them grounded in the Bible. We need to teach them above everything else to love each other. And we need to get to work on this right now, actively showing our love for one another to the world. Praying and loving each other would probably not be at the top of most people's lists of strategies for overcoming evil. It certainly wasn't on mine a few years ago. It is very striking to me that when God lay, lay, lays out the steps that lead to overcoming evil with goodness, the first thing he says is let your love be genuine. If you want to overcome evil with evil, that's where you have to begin, with sincere, with sincere love. So here's priority number one for us as Christians, to love each other sincerely and genuinely. This is what we have to do when the evil is all around us. This is what we have to do because we are in Christ. God says, do this, and you will overcome evil with good. Real love is when we lift each other up, isn't it? We live in a culture that thrives on putting other people down. But God says it has to be different among my people. The church is called to be something different from the rest of the world. Our call is to lift up those, for, the, the, those, those people of Christ. Jesus is for the world when we live like him. Christ calls us to become a community of people who lift each other up in a culture where people are pulling each other down. Does the church do this outstandingly well? Not always. Too often it becomes about us and what we want. And when that happens, we end up being a mirror for the world. But Christ says, you are called to love. Genuine love is immensely attractive. We are all drawn to love. Genuine love is where we have to start. 
if we are to overcome evil with good. constantly at work in our lives. You are a help in times of difficulty, a strength in times of weakness, a guide when we feel lost and alone. We know that through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have the power to transform lives, to mend relationships, to bring strength to the weary, and hope to the brokenhearted. And so, Today we gather and bring you our worries and our burdens, our hopes and our dreams to your throne of grace, knowing that you are the Lord of our lives and the hope of the world. Today we pray for world leaders that they may always seek the peace and security of our world. We pray especially for all of those women and men who are running for office in this country that we may have the discernment to elect the best people to lead us who will serve you and your world. We pray for countries laid waste by war and conflict and dictatorship, remembering especially the plight of people in Afghanistan. We also lift to you all of those people who are struggling against the effects of the natural world, especially the people of Haiti, and here in North America for those experiencing wildfires and drought, floods and terrible storms. We pray today for the police and the emergency services as they seek the peace and security of our nation. And for ordinary people in countries around the world who are caught up in the events of world politics. We pray now for your church as it exists around the world recognizing our fellowship with Christians in Africa and Asia and South America and throughout the developing world. We ask that your blessing will be upon ministers and missionaries, medical workers and aid agencies, whose task is to feed the hungry, heal the sick, and support the brokenhearted. Lord, we pray for your church here in Forest and in Lambton County for those that are thriving and those that have lost a sense of direction. We give thanks for our church and its people and gladly acknowledge all the gifts you have given us. Grant us your help and guidance and support. We too have problems and needs and concerns, worries about ourselves, our families, and the people we love. And we remember in our prayers today those who are worried about their health and what the future might hold for them. Those who feel anxious or depressed or afraid. Those who are in hospital. Those with burdens that they find impossible to share. Those who are mourning the loss of someone dear to their heart. And we pray for ourselves that we might know the gentle guidance and authority of Jesus in all parts of our lives, leading us, guiding us, encouraging and directing us now and always. And we continue in the words that Jesus himself taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. 